Okay, so question four, a spring was suspended from the ceiling and the weight is x and the total length is y. So you have one value of y which is missing. So you need to find a suitable calculation to, to determine whether a linear relationship exists. And if you whether want to know whether you've got a linear relationship or not, there's only one way, you find r. So you put everything in the calculator and you find r. Okay, and the comment for it is there's an almost perfect positive linear relationship between x and y. Find the equation y on x, you're finding a and b. Okay, if they don't state anything, it will be in four decimal places. Okay, and you find the missing measurement, you substitute and you find. Shouldn't be a problem. In a similar experiment, the variable y was replaced with the variable h. So what is happening? The height of the suspended weight above the floor. Meaning just now, y is from the ceiling to the end. Do you see the y there, the picture? Okay, it's from the ceiling to the weight. H is from the floor to the weight. Understand? So, it, it, logically, H plus Y is 3.05 meters, right? So, what is the relationship for RHY? You know it's a perfect relationship. Why perfect? Because there is a formula. H plus Y is 3.05. Or in other words, you use, look at my slide. If there is a formula. Whenever there is a formula, it will always be a perfect relationship but in this case y is it negative because when h become bigger y will be smaller right one will increase one will decrease correct or not that's why it's negative one what would be the value of r x h that means between the weight and h it will be negative one right why because if x approximately negative one why because if x increase the weight of x increase the h will decrease because the spring will become longer right Okay, and then R, H, Y, between H and Y, we did already, is a negative, perfect negative. Alright, a team of salesperson submitted their monthly expenses for number 5. I'll go through it quickly because I think it's not so difficult. Write down the linear regression line for predicting expenses from sale. Okay, so this is your linear regression line. You predict whatever that was missing. Just make sure when you put it, because you see, up there is in hundreds of dollars, you know. So when you put it in, you must make sure you put in properly. Because the format in the table is in hundreds. Understand? This is impossible. Why is it impossible? Because it's an extrapolation. Okay, and you cannot have negative money. Okay, later it was found that salesperson G had been on a holiday for three weeks. Meaning three weeks she was on a holiday. Estimate this person's sales and expenses for a whole month. So if one week is 9.7, four weeks, you times four, you get 38.8. So basically, in other words, it's 3,880. But when you put into the equation, you have to put it in as 38.8 because you must follow the format of the table. Okay? Then the projected expenses for the whole month is 26.81. Okay, this is something that I did not cover yet. Okay, so now I want you to follow exactly this way. If a salesperson sale increase, meaning what are they saying? X increase by 20. Okay, which is X plus $20 line, in other words. But because $20 in the table is in the form of hundreds, you use 0 0.2. Do you see that? 0 0.2, understand? So that, that means if X increase by 0 0.2, I'm repeating, uh, $20 is what they're saying increase. Actually, you're supposed to write X plus 20. Why you cannot write X plus 20? Because in the table, it's in the form of hundreds. So you got to follow the form of hundreds, understand? So you just write back the whole equation that we calculated just now, negative 22.6317 plus 1.2742. In the bracket, you will put X plus 0.2. Okay, do you understand what's going on there? X plus 0.2. Then you will open the bracket. There shouldn't be a problem, right? You open the bracket, you get 1.2742X plus 0.2548. Okay, so what you can see is the first part of the equation is the original equation. Okay, plus 0 0.2548. That means the expenses will increase by 0 0.25 cents. Just look on the table there at the side here that you can see. I've shown you how to work it out. You just put it into the bracket, open the whole bracket and then you will see the original equation plus with whatever that you're going to increase there. Understand or not? Okay, same goes for this. Determine the equation for predicting E from P. If you want to predict E from P, E will be Y. P will be X. Then you just plug in into the equation, okay? Now you want to predict P from E. You got to re-enter everything in because now, now P is going to be Y, E is going to be X. Alright? 
All right, they've given you the square of the correlation coefficient there. You just square root, but why do you put a negative there? Look at the scatter plot. Line is coming down, understand? Okay, gradient of the line. How do you find the gradient of the line? They've given you standard deviation of x and y. That shouldn't be a problem, right? Use the formula as you see in the box there to find b. Now, if x is increased by 5, what I just taught you just now is the same. If x is increased by y, put it into the formula. Now, you don't have the, the numbers, right? You just use a plus b x. Huh? a plus b bracket x plus 5. Then you open a bracket, you will get increased by 5b. So, increased by 5b, you just take 5 and times with your gradient. Okay, you will see when y will decrease by 1.55, okay? Why decrease? You must see that as a negative sign. That's why it is decrease. Okay, question 8. Um, I'll quickly go through. I think it's the same thing. It shouldn't be a problem. You will do your position and so on. Make sure you follow the format. Okay, this one they give you, uh, basically they're giving you the uh, summary statistics and then work it out. Shouldn't be a problem. Question 10 is also good. Okay, you put everything in a calculator, get actual marks are to be adjusted by 20%. If you increase it by 20%, what's happening to the equation of the line? Okay, the new equation of the line also, you will multiply with whatever that is there. Understand? Find the linear correlation, you just, it will be the same. Lah. You won't change what? Because correlation coefficient, when you times or anything, won't change. Understand? Okay, question 11, same thing. Just put everything in the calculator and calculate. It shouldn't really be a problem. But if you have a problem, just ask me. And I'll explain to you personally. Okay, all this, you have to predict. Put everything in the calculator and you have to predict for x equals to 11. All right, then find the residuals for 7, 8, and 9. How to find residual? Actual minus predicted. Shouldn't be a problem. So question 13 also shouldn't be a problem. The same. All right. 